Most people know that Softer allows us to connect to data sources. They're most commonly connected to things like Airtable, Notion, or SmartSuite. But did you know that Softer has an integration with REST APIs, which means that we can really pull in information from pretty much any data source, even if it's not one of the more popular integrations that Softer has. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to set this up so that you're not limited to those most popular data sources, but really the sky's the limit with any tool that has an open API. So if learning more about this is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. We make it our mission to help you unlock the full potential of your no-code software. And in this video, as I mentioned, we're gonna be taking a look at Softer's integration with the REST API. So this allows us to connect to pretty much any data source that's out there that has an accessible REST API. But before we get into the heart of the video, I first want to invite you to follow along with me in Softer. If you're not already a Softer user, please consider signing up with our affiliate link. And if you enter the code that you see on your screen, you will get one free month of Softer, over $100 in value of their premium plan. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. And if you're following along, you can start with installing the client portal by Softer. So this is a template that's readily available. I'll share the link wherever you found this video. And what it allows us to do is just get up and running quickly. And back here in the database, we can also put together a very fast uh, database by installing this template. So we have these different tables that are already built in Airtable with these various users of freelancers, employees, admin, or clients. But most importantly, I wanna highlight this invoices table. So you'll see that an invoice is connected to a project and we are able to uh, inherit or look up the client contacts and the company of that project, as well as the project lead. We can also track the status of this and the amount and when it was invoiced, etc. But let's be honest, Airtable isn't necessarily the best place to track and handle your financial data. Many companies are using online payment tools like Stripe, QuickBooks, Xero, etc. Well, in this video, we want to break this down and rather than creating a separate a uh, copy, if you will, of our invoices, let's just integrate directly with that payment processor so that we can see those invoices as they are created. Now for us, we're gonna be using Stripe. So I've gone ahead and pulled Stripe up here and I've turned it in on test mode. That way we're not sharing any actual data and we can get going with the uh, samples. So let's go ahead and pop back here into Softer. And on the left-hand side of our screen, we're gonna click on the settings and we're going to go down to the third option here, which is data sources. And when we open this up, we see that we're currently connected to Airtable. Well, we need to add an additional data source. So we're gonna say, uh, click on these three dots here and go to manage. And this will open up for us all of our different data sources. And if I'm being honest, mine is a mess. You look at all these data sources, we create tons of videos uh, you know, with Softer, always integrating with Airtable, and uh, we, we create a new one of these each time. So yours will hopefully look a lot cleaner than this. You'll have many fewer data sources, but we're gonna say we wanna connect to a new data source. Now these are the defaults, right? Airtable and Notion, SmartSuite, Google Sheets, as I mentioned, these are the most popular. They also have direct integrations with things like Monday, uh, BigQuery, SQL, etc. But don't sleep on this. I'm actually surprised a lot more folks aren't talking about the REST API now being in beta. That's what we're gonna make a choice of here. And basically what this allows us to do is it's not gonna put ownership on software to build that direct integration. We're gonna set that integration up here in the REST API setup. So we're gonna click on continue here and you'll see that they've already established some of the more popular templates. So things like Shopify, Intercom, Stripe, we can do here or we can add something manually. If you make this selection and go to the next screen, you're gonna be able to name whatever you'd like. We can then uh, bring in the, the name and values on the headers and add headers to our calls. But for us, we're gonna back up and go to Stripe here because they've already set up this template and we're gonna go step-by-step step into setting it up for ourselves. 
Now you'll see that when we go to the screen, it's gonna look very much like the REST API setup if we were doing it manually, but really all we need to put in here is the name and we can update this if we'd like. And then we've got this uh, name for this header and then the bearer is your Stripe API key. So this part right here is something that we can update ourselves. Let's head on into Stripe and we will find our API key. We can do a little search here. It's gonna be on the developers panel and here's our API key. Now I'm gonna grab the secret key here. It's normally blurred out, but uh, I will reveal it and then I will just click here to copy that. Now, even though this is a test account, I'm still gonna keep it blurred out. We never wanna share our API keys, things of that nature. So make sure to keep yours very private, but we're gonna head on over to Softer now and just paste that in where it says your Stripe API key. We're gonna keep bearer in front of that and we will continue from here. So now it's saying, hey, uh, I know a little bit about uh, the resources that are available in Stripe because we're using the template, but do note that we can add additional resources here. So we can bring in and look at single customers as well as customers. Now, if we wanted to add additional resources, as I mentioned, we can do that here. We simply give them a name, identify the HTTP method and assign a URL, and we can go you know, line by line here, bringing in all of this information. Now let's take a look at what the template is set up for customers. We're gonna click in here and do an edit, and you can see that, again, because we're working from a template, it already knows all of this information. So this is set up for us. Now, in order to move forward, let's make a decision on whether we're gonna do customers or single customer. Uh, for us, we'll go forward with customers. We'll make a selection here to edit. And here we can choose to execute. We don't actually have to set anything up quite yet. We'll just say execute, and we see that it's returning some information. And uh, that, it's that simple, we can just say add. So we are going to add that element. Let's go into single customer and delete this. And we are happy with this. So we've got just our customers, let's save. So now we've properly set up our connection with Stripe, although we haven't actually pulled any information out of it. If we click here into this connection, we can re-authenticate it, we can remove it entirely, which clearly I need to do with a lot of my connections to clean up. We can also rename it, or we can click here to see what active apps it is currently used in. Now, because we didn't add any resources to this connection, we're not actually pulling in any useful information. But on the next step, I'll show you how you can now integrate your app with this connection. So in order to do this, we're gonna go back into Softer now, but we need to access the app itself where we wanna establish the connection. So we're gonna go back here and we're going to go back into our client portal. This is again, is the template that we were using. Now, when you click into any block inside of here, you're going to see that it is assigned to a data source. And by default, when we install a new template, it's gonna connect all of the different blocks to the singular data source. In our case, we copied that template into an Airtable database. So all of this is connecting to the different tables we use in Airtable. If you need to change that data source, you can do it at a block level. So let's suppose, for example, because in our case, we had customer information. Let's take a look at our pages here and we have a page for clients. So if we make a selection here and we drill in, this is a list of our clients. And again, this data is pulling from Airtable as its source. But what if instead we wanted to bring that information from Stripe? If you recall, we had this established connection with our customers. So all we would need to do is click into this block here and update this data source. So now that we have set up our REST API connection with Stripe, we're gonna see that in our list of potential data sources. Now we can optionally add another data source here and we would go through the same steps that we followed earlier in setting up that REST API. So here we go, we can connect right here and you'll see that the first resource or the only resource that we built in our connection was to customers. Now, because we didn't go in with any more information, we don't actually have any company data to pull in, but this is where we would be able to map all of the different elements of the customer resource. So if we were bringing in things like email, name, industry, company name, we would be able to display all of that right here. And again, it's pulling that data from Stripe instead of from Airtable. Now, what's the benefit of doing all this? Well, as you've probably already surmised, this allows us to not have redundant data. Because right now, if we didn't have this direct from Stripe, we are essentially creating automations that takes that data from Stripe and puts it into Airtable or from Airtable into Stripe. And now, 
from our software portal, we're connecting to Airtable to get that data. So it's forcing this redundant data entry in Airtable that frankly doesn't necessarily have to be there. Instead, we can say, let's connect to Stripe. That's where the actual data is. And we can bring in this information. Now, for our example, we established a connection here to these companies or the clients inside of Stripe, but we can connect to other resources as well. For example, invoices so that when an invoice is created or paid those statuses and those elements are automatically being pulled in here we don't have to pass the data from stripe to Airtable and then having it show up here so i hope that this starts getting those gears working and making it possible for you to think of many new ways that you can integrate with other software out there not just the core databases that we always connect using softer I hope you got a ton of value here. If you did, please consider subscribing and liking the video. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to swing by our website for some help. But of course, most importantly, keep on building.